To our friends in the restaurant industry, we're with you. Now is the time to lean on one another for support while we navigate these difficult circumstances together. I invite you to take a break from the stress and worry we're all experiencing and enjoy this new episode of Check, Please! Bay Area, recorded earlier this year. The clams are fresh. And I love that pie. It's a really big portion, crispy on the bottom. It was a wonderful adventure. It uh, was a four-hour dinner. You can share, or you can just keep it all to yourself if it's really like good and that. not share. <laughs> For sure, keep it all to myself. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors, whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. At Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full-service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. The national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Hi, I'm Leslie Sirocco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. In this episode, we revisit three special eateries that promise unforgettable experiences. From season 13, teacher Julia Liepman shares sips of sherry and savory bites that transport us to the streets of España. This Berkeley hotspot is a festive ode to Spanish nightlife, bringing a California twist to Taberna classics. Discover the vibrant energy of La Marcha Tapas. La Marcha literally means to march in Spanish, but it's more of a kind of a slang, like vamos a la marcha, like let's go out, let's go get some tapas, let's maybe go dancing, hang out, maybe get churros at 6 a.m., you know, one of my favorite things to do when I was living in Spain. So it's really kind of an ode to the nightlife and the fun that is going out for tapas. My name is Emily Sarlot. I am the chef and co-owner of La Marcha Tapas Bar. It had always been a dream of mine and my business partner, Sergio Monleon, to open a restaurant. We base a lot of our recipes around traditional items that you would see you know, at a taverna or, or a tapas bar in Spain. To make a really awesome paella, it's a slow process. You have to kind of build up the ingredients. For our paellas, they range from traditional with rabbit, snail, and duck to all the way to the other side with pork, pancetta, chorizo. So, you know, an ode to where it came from, but maybe a fun twist on it as well, and using California ingredients. We wanted to create an experience where people felt welcomed, they kind of felt like part of our family. Sergio loves soccer. He regularly will open at 4 a.m. to play soccer matches and invite people in and open for brunch to be able to watch the games. And we will be showing most of the World Cup games. I mean, he will probably be here at 4 a.m. I don't know if I will, but <laughs> one of us will be here. All right, Julia, how did you discover this place? Well, I used to do CrossFit across the street, and I was excited to see there was a new restaurant coming in. Because like, that well, works can... well, CrossFit yes, and exercise. I, you know, I think food. it complements each other well. I would mm -hmm. work out and then overeat. Um, <laughs> I was really excited. I like eating a lot of different things when I go out to eat and trying different things. And with tapas, you can do that because they're small portions. And then the happy hour really made me want to go back. Every Not time. one happy yes, hour, no. but two happy yeah, hours. So I can, either, I can go after work and then go back and later in the evening. And when you go, you get to order a drink and it comes with a complimentary tapa. And do you have a, a go-to tapa that you yes. select? I always start with the meatballs. They're called albondigas. Mm -hmm. And they are amazing. They're wild boar, which I didn't even really realize was in a meatball. I mean, it is You pork. can grind up yeah. anything. Yeah, that's, in there. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um, but it's in a tomato cream sherry sauce. And mm -hmm. 
It was amazing that I learned about sherry there. And I always thought that sherry was what my grandma used to cook with. But no. then when I went there, everyone was drinking it. I'm a, I'm a sherry lover. And you can do flights there. Yes, and that's what yeah. I did to start getting to know sherries more. Right. And you could try different sherries to make sure it was the one you wanted, and they range from being really dry. Mm -hmm. And then they can be really sweet and dark, so it was just this amazing rainbow of sherries, and you would try them all. I like a yeah. rainbow of sherries. Rob, what was your experience? Well, I walked in, and the place was packed out, so I knew I was in the right place. And they had a really active bar. The music was playing. We sat down, didn't realize it was happy hour, and then our server explained that every drink we got, we would get free little bites mm -hmm. to test sample, and then right. we could go back and order. And then on top of that, I think everything was $6 off, um, which was amazing. I love the whole atmosphere of exploring the food. And because they're small plates, you can share or you can just keep it all to yourself if it's really like good and that. not share. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> keep it all to myself. That's I know. what I want. <laughs> hands off, hands off. You know, first of all, I just want to say, when I walked in the restaurant off top, I was like, yo, if this is uh, what I'm smelling, is what I'm going to taste, this is going to be a great experience. Right. So I went in and I ordered the uh, La Marcha Sangria, which they have, you know, a white sangria or red. I grabbed the red. It was really good. I ended up getting the uh, Bruselas or the Brussels sprouts, mm -hmm. which were, were amazing. yeah, really crispy. Mm -hmm. The highlight, I feel like, like was probably the col rosada. It's like a crispy hamon mm -hmm. on top of kale, but then it had these kind of uh, berries in the bottom mm -hmm. of it. Berries, yeah. So you're getting like a sweet taste, and then you're getting the crispness of the kale, and then the crispness of the hamon on top of it. Yeah. Like every bite yes. of that was incredible. Yes. Hot. I want it now. It's <laughs> <laughs> not really good. Julia's yeah. over there wiping with you. I, right? I like to try a lot of the different small plates before I jump into the paella. The coca is this really amazing flatbread mm -hmm. with manchego cheese and mustard and caramelized onions. Right. And then the paella. That's like the big show, the finale. And we like to get the one with three types of pork. It's called tres cerditos, which mm -hmm. is like three little pigs. And I love that paella. It's a really big portion, crispy on the bottom. The rice is... That's the important part. Is yes. Crispy yeah, on sure. the bottom. Yes. And that's oh, the yeah. And the saffron, they import mm -hmm. from Spain. And so it's this beautiful, rich yellow mm -hmm. color. And then sometimes you can get it with mussels. There's like all these different types of paella. And if you're vegetarian, they have a paella for vegetarians, mm -hmm. too, which wow. my friends are happy about. Yeah, I had so the much. chicken croquetas. Mm -hmm. uh, really and mm -hmm. super good. Like you break it open, the fried kind of crust, mm -hmm. and that cheese kind of pouring out of that. Mm -hmm was really good. They also give you like an extra like dip on mm -hmm. the side. I was blown away by the little uh, sweet peppers stuffed with mm -hmm. cheese. Mm -hmm. In fact, we ordered several rounds of those because <laughs> one is not enough. No, of course that's true. Not as, and the blood orange salad mm -hmm. was not only beautiful, it was delicious. And of course, because of the olive oil with the cherry vinaigrette mm -hmm. and then those beautiful slices of blood orange. And mm -hmm. it was really kind of a palate cleanser between a lot of, you know, richer food. Yes. Mm -hmm. There was nothing on the menu I did not like. Every flavor was really intensified. Every plate also looked really nice. Well, and what did you have to drink? I know you live in wine mm. country as well. Yes, so we know. had a uh, Rioja. Rioja is one of my favorite Spanish. And they do have a lovely list. They have they a do. really, really nice wine list. And again, an exploration of of Spain in that wine list and that sherry list. I had the oh. olive oil cake. Oh, my oh you love it. I make That's olive your thing. Olive I know. It's my thing, and I'm obsessed with it. And yeah. I have to say, I make olive oil cake. I've Ooh. eaten dozens of olive oil cakes. This one was amazing. Yeah. It was just the right amount of sweet and savory. I could taste the olive oil in it. They use a good olive oil mm. from Spain. She actually brought the bottle out. And oh, good. Let me look at it. Mm -hmm. So we had the churros, which are delicious. Mm. They're crispy on the outside, just like a churro should be. And then it comes with this melted chocolate. And they always know when I come to bring a spoon so I can finish all the chocolate and get the fruit <laughs> out of my sangria. I'm like, I don't like to leave any mm. plates dirty. I like to make sure everything is clean and done. Uh, service was really cool. We sat at the bar and, you know, everybody was really well. Welcoming. Folks really, you know, educated you on what was on the menu. Right. One of my friends that was with me was kind of like, I don't know what to order. So she kind of helped us out with letting us know kind of the flavor profile. So I love the service. It was quick for one thing. I like the fact that they recommended certain plates. They they were knowledgeable about the wine. In fact, our server was so knowledgeable that she actually suggested certain wines with certain foods. All right, your spot. Wrap it up for us. La Marcha is an amazing environment with lots of tapas to eat and lots of sherry to drink. <laughs> all right, DC? Uh, go ahead and grab yourself the sangria and then eat all the fruit in the bottom of the cup. <laughs> and Rob? Just sit back, order, and let all of those little plates come at you until you've eaten everything you can. <laughs> and don't stop. And yes. Don't stop. If you would like to try La Marcha Tapas, it's located on San Pablo Avenue at University in Berkeley. It's open for dinner every night. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30.
Our next guest, Joe Ordona, shares a hidden gem that's perfect for an intimate date night or a Warriors game at the bar with the regulars. With velvet curtains, pub classic served late into the evening, and dim lighting that makes everyone look good, this is a neighborhood staple, and it's as classic as it gets. In San Francisco, it's the Brazen Head. It's inspired by 1980. The carpeting with the velvet curtains, the brown wood, the low ceilings, the dim lights. Everybody looks good in this light. So it's the kind of thing that everybody feels comfortable right away. My name is Eddie Savino, and I own the Brazen Head Restaurant in San Francisco. One of the things that makes us a little bit unique is that we don't have a sign. We took the windows out, put in new windows, put in awnings, and thought, oh, we'll just put the sign on the awnings. And then we didn't. And then it became no sign, no reservation, no credit cards. It's added to the mystique of it. Like, oh, that's that little place on the corner with no sign, and people like that. For us to be here for 37 years, we've served many generations. We have a lot of younger people who want to go to someplace a little bit different. Then we have the older people who appreciate this because it's from their era. Then we have people who recommend to their parents, oh, you got, Dad, you're going to love this place. It's got Manhattans. It's got all fashions. They have steaks. They have prime rib. The secrets of success are just treating people fairly, giving them value for what they're getting and making them know that we actually care that they're here. All right, Joe, you gotta give a little clue to folks how to find this place. There's no sign, is there? It's absolutely right. There's no sign. It's just one of those, those neighborhood iconic gems in the city. You know, you walk through the door, it's like you're going through the secret garden and you're just discovering a time capsule back to the times where you could go to a place to escape in an intimate setting. You could have date night or you could be, you know, on the platform on the side of the bar watching the Warriors beat up on another team. <laughs> <laughs> and it really is. I and mean, when you said bar, I mean, this is a belly up to the bar place, yeah. isn't it? Eddie's from the Bronx, the owner. Absolutely. Is... Well, a lot of people don't know, but it's one of the few places in San Francisco that's open late. Mm -hmm. is to that, eat late. Yeah, to yeah. eat late. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, I, I think the kitchen closes at 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the service staff that's a regular place for them. It's a steakhouse, isn't it? This it is. a meat place. I go there for the prime rib. It's perfectly done. When I ask for medium rare, it's medium rare. You could kind of slice the beef with a fork. I always, always order like a side of vegetables because I kind of like crispy vegetables, not overly done. I got the filet mignon, which oh, I nice. love yeah. because it just reminds you of like meat butter in your mouth. And mm -hmm. they do it really well. Like they're not trying to be fussy about it. They just, absolutely simple. Yeah. Yeah, and it's simple. I loved it. It's like sublime in its simplicity. Uh -huh. right? it's yes, simple. totally. <laughs> and we also got an appetizer. Uh -huh. um, we got the artichoke and smoked salmon dip. Uh -huh. And that was okay. What, but what I appreciated was the bread was a little harder. But then the server, I asked, oh, do you have something softer to bring or a softer bread? And he brought their house bread, which was great. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever had it, but it's chewy. Oh, it's so good. I should yeah. have asked for that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I was just yeah. munching on that with my drink. Mind, she went at Midnight. I did go oh, at midnight. Oh, wow. so, I did go so, at midnight. So I love you went at midnight, so I you like, know. I mean, this, this is late the night, night, late night hot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's pretty full. It was yeah. full. Mm -hmm. I walked in, like you said, it's like you know, Cheers, where everybody knows your name yeah, type of thing. Right, like exactly. you walked in, and it exactly. just felt like everyone was just hanging out. Yeah, it was this fun atmosphere at midnight. You know, the staff's <laughs> been there for like years, maybe you know, back to the 1980s. He's been here since hello. Mm -hmm. 34. 34 years. Well, now, what was your experience, Andriana? I must have went on a really off night because my I ordered the burger because, like, how do you okay. mess up a burger? And my I ordered it medium, um, and I always order a little more than I want it cooked just mm. because usually places overcook okay. it. Um, but mine was more well done, um, and my bread for the burger was cold. Uh, so 
it might have been off night, but it was not something that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But I too got the spinach and artichoke. It was actually spinach, artichoke, smoked salmon, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. And I guess I was just wanting a little bit more flavor wise. More flavor. Yeah. Okay. But I give them props for the smoked salmon. I yeah. love smoked salmon. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that was right. really interesting. Mm -hmm. They're known for their classic drinks. Right. You know, they've got old school uh, bartenders, you know, that I love. Mm -hmm. so, so. Classic place, classic mm -hmm. menu, classic folks still work. Working there. Right. Right. So I got a vodka tonic and it was more tonic than vodka. It was really? more of a wow. tonic oh. and a splash of vodka. A little weak. A little weak for mm. me. Right. I got a drink. Right. Um, which is so odd at midnight. It's like, let's have a drink. But <laughs> my drink was actually really strong. Um, and it was simple. It was a San Jose Cabos. And it was tequila, agave, and lime. And very simple, but very strong. And it was a nice start of the night to just kind of relax. Yeah, see, that's and... why I'm kind of surprised, because usually <laughs> The drinks are stronger. Rather than yeah, weaker, I was surprised. Yeah, it was you know. strong. Was your experience with service good? It was. And mm -hmm. what actually stood out to me was that I never felt rushed in a way. It, it almost felt like they wanted you to just hang out, mm -hmm. sit back. Something I thought was a little weird, you keep mentioning that it's like known for the meat. Um, mm -hmm. And he, my friend had asked, like, the kind of steaks that they use, and they were like, well, it's meat. That was their uh, answer. Well, and not <laughs> shouldn't that. there be more to it? I don't know what the answer should be, but. <laughs> right. I feel right. like it should be more, more than, than me. <laughs> yeah, so it was a little miss there. I don't know. I feel like I should have gone with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about the roasted you know. garlic? Oh, so I'm a garlic fan. You know, we, we finished like half the bulb that comes out in the bulb. And the waiter came up and was getting ready to take it away. I was like, no, 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 I'm going to save the rest for my steak. Mm -hmm. One of the really, you know, non-meat dishes that you should try if you ever go back is the clam chowder. Perfectly done, you know, the clams are fresh. Mm -hmm. You know, I always find myself like thinking about that clam chowder. It's that comfort food right. feeling. What about um, dessert for you? I got so, the creme brulee. Oh. It was a really crispy top and it was very sweet. I thought the flavors were really good, but the consistency of the cream underneath was a little too hard for me, almost like ice creamy. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> you have to try the pot of creme though, the <laughs> chocolate pot of creme, because oh. it's just this concentration of chocolate, uh -huh. it's just more than enough for three people, and we were just kind of fighting to get it there. Yeah. All right, Joe, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. If you're looking for a secret garden oasis away from a hard week at work, go to the Brazen Head. All right, and Andriana? Not really my spot, but maybe at 1 a.m. after a few drinks, I can deal with it. <laughs> All right, and Seisha? For unfussy, really simple food and solid drinks, head to Brazen Head. If you would like to try the Brazen Head, it's located on Buchanan Street at Greenwich in San Francisco. It's open for dinner every night and reservations are not accepted. The average meal tab per person without drinks is around $50. Our final guest from season 11, clinical research scientist Philippe Forg, treats us to the immersive poetry of a chef's deeply personal experience. Every dish is sprinkled with expectation-defying inspiration that has earned visionary status for Dominique Crenn and countless accolades, including three Michelin stars. For a culinary experience unlike any other, this is Atelier Crenn. I always believe that food is art, our expression of the way that we feel about food, about the world, about moments. It's a dialogue between us and the customer. My name is Dominique Crenn. The name of the restaurant is Atelier Crenn. It's the name after my dad. My father was a politician and he was a painter too. So you can see painting through the restaurant. It's a place where I want people to emerge in a space that is much more than just coming and eat here. I think I want people to walk into this place without expectation. I want to pamper them, but they have to trust me. They have to trust my team, and they have to let go of whatever happened during the day before, just let go and just come and enjoy. I would say the last course, you get a beautiful wooden box that we make here, filled with chocolate, and then on the box it's the poem that I wrote to my father when he passed away. I think it's very powerful. I'm not just serving food, but I'm also sharing a part of me. And it's, I think it's very important. I love the box and the poetry, and it's, it's pretty powerful, yeah. 
I'm, I'm like crying right now. <laughs> All right, Philippe, this restaurant has gotten so many accolades. When did you discover it? You know, I discovered it on my 45th birthday. We were 12 and we were in the back room and I did not know what to expect. Uh, I discovered an experience that I haven't had in dining uh, ever. Mm -hmm. From the time that you read the poetry on the menu, uh, which sets the theme for the whole evening, the utensils and the room, and especially the wines and the food that she prepares is unique. And I don't think that you can say that there's another restaurant in the city that is like that. It was a wonderful adventure. It uh, was a four hour dinner and I enjoyed every minute of it. Elaine, what was your experience? And I, experience, of course, is the word. It is an experience. It was just stupendous. I've never had a meal like it. And I really do think it's the best meal I've ever had in my life. Wow, wow. It was amazing and beautiful and yet with all that not pretentious uh, which I have experienced in other Michelin star restaurants. Right. And this is two Michelin stars. Did you get a sense that you could ask any question and they would answer with a smile and everything? So lovely. There was no stiffness. It was normal people who love food. Right. Brian, start off with what you had. We started the meal with a palate cleanser and it was a white chocolate with a gelée on top that had like a, a liquid inside that when you put it in your mouth, for me, I put it in my mouth and I went, what's going on? I bite into it, it all over my shirt. Like a kid. Um, <laughs> all over my shirt. It was like one bite. <laughs> it, well, I went, oh, everywhere. So, what part of the poem was that? <laughs> that was the first line. That was the first, that was the absolute first thing that we ate. And his cure. Yeah. <laughs> that in the glass of Dom Perignon, right at the beginning of the meal, you already know. That set it off. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Chef Kren came out, greeted us, mm -hmm. was really friendly, and just said, you know, welcome, it's your first time, you live in the neighborhood, that's great. Pretty much buckled your seatbelts, because this is a ride. Mm -hmm. There were oysters, there yes. was fish, yes. there was a smoked trout. trout. Yes. Oh, and then a row. And the row. Yes. Oh. I, amazing. It was amazing. I love smoked trout, and that's the best smoked trout I've ever had, well, ever I, in my life. I had another early favorite. It was an oyster roasted, sitting on top of some creme fraiche, sitting on top of some fermented pineapple. Yeah. Oh, now, why would yes. an oyster and a delay. creme fraiche and pineapple work? It's the most fabulous taste. So that's what I like about this place, is that you would never think of putting those ingredients together. She does, you eat it, and you're just wowed every time. Mm -hmm. There was a wonderful tartlet that uh, was a savory raw cow's milk. Yeah, yeah and they, they called it a cheese course, and it was astounding. And uh, I think with the, the mustard seed coulis that they had, it was just sublime. It was really good. It was very good. It was really, a really <laughs> nice cheese course. Mm -hmm. There was a lobster, not a bisque per se, but a couple of really nice pieces of lobster yeah. with this broth over it that we were, I mean, we were holding the bowl. Yeah. Yeah. And to speak to the bowl, to the utensils, to again, to how thoughtful the meal was. I'm looking at my spoon and I'm going, oh, it's wood and it looks like it's hand carved. Right. And sure enough, I asked, and they go, oh yeah, the pastry chef actually sits there and whittles our spoons <laughs> and they get that patina of wood. It was right. that kind of care into the full meal is why. Because you're paying money. I mean, this is a very expensive restaurant well, for the experience. I, yeah. For what you get, I think it's... Mm -hmm. Any restaurant, right. you get what you pay for. Right. Yeah. Not all the time, but with this, I think you get even more, more, more than, than what you pay for, for because Dominique it's Crenn. It's art. It's art. It's absolutely. Food. Absolutely. You know, I was going to be indignant about the price, but then after the second course, I said, forget that. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy <laughs> it. I am going to enjoy this. Right. And it was, it was such a memorable experience that you have to stop thinking about what it's costing. And talk about, um, because they do beautiful wine pairings, oh, you have choices. Wow. You can either get the reserve tasting or the by the glass or the grand tasting, mm -hmm. and any time you start Red. with Dom Perignon, it's nothing's and wrong with you that. You already know. Right. <laughs> and what about desserts and sort of those, the rest of those courses? Oh my gosh. They started with this uh, forest theme and there were yes. um, egg white kind of mm -hmm. uh, candy and then there were mignardises on the side, uh, edible butterflies and leaves and it, you just didn't want to eat it. It was so beautiful. It came in a thing that almost looked like, like a tree. Right. The dish alone was beautiful. Yeah. And the dessert inside, there was, it looked like berries. Right. that were actually ice cream. Right. Mm -hmm. Get out of here, it was great. Yes. And then you won't leave hungry. Mm -hmm. As much you as you're eating these very small, a lot of them single bites, we were very satiated. All right, Philippe, your spot. Give us a quick summary. 
If you want to treat yourself to a wonderful holistic experience, go to Atelier Kren. All right. I find myself reading the poem that was the menu and trying to tie words to the food, for which I only have one. Incredible. All right, and Elaine. And it was a night of poetry, so I wrote a haiku to express my sentiments. A night of surprises, flavors bold but ephemeral, taste earth, woods, sea. If you would like to try Atelier Crenn, it's located on Fillmore Street at Filbert in San Francisco. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Reservations are required, and the restaurant is now pescatarian. The tasting menu starts at $345 per person without drinks. If you missed them the first time around, we hope you've enjoyed a look back at these three spots. Check them out for some unforgettable dining experiences. From season 13, Julie Liepman shared with us her Berkeley destination for hot flamenco nights and sangria sundaes, La Marcha Tapas Bar. Joe Ordona from season 12 showed us his old school spot with pub classics in San Francisco, the Brazen Head. And finally, from season 11, clinical research scientist Philippe Forg immersed us in the exquisite poetry of San Francisco's finest, Atelier Crenn. So join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers. We really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and my notes on the wines we're drinking today. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors, whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. It's the transplant procedure that didn't just save one life. It saved six. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com at Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full-service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union.